Oh, wow. Feeling it in here. Yeah. Whoa. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. Did you see something right over there? What'd you see? It was like a fog. And then it just disappeared when it I put my light yeah, towards it? Yeah, as soon as the light hit it, it was gone. That's what Captain did when he turned on the light. He said it turned towards him, and then he turned this on and disappeared. I'm hooked up to y'all's audio, y'all's mics. And I am hearing footsteps walking around in the room that y'all are in right now. He's hearing something that might be an EB EVP phenomenon, okay. so maybe we should start an EVP. OK. We believe that this was a room that was used by nurses who were treating those with the yellow fever. Did you work here in the home? Did you hear that? That sounded like a, a low echo, like a, like a vent. Was it like something falling down the fireplace, Ben? No, this is a brick fireplace. That was so weird. That's funny. My necklace just came off. Look at that. Look at this. I just, I had it clasped earlier. Chair. Really weird. Like, it's missing a piece. Like it, like, it broke off. How? It's not like you were doing anything. Jewelry. Dude, jewelry. Oh, my gosh. I don't think it's a coincidence that Pam has been talking about jewelry going missing. It's missing this part. It's sheared off. And now Ben's necklace literally fell off his neck. I think there's a spirit here doing this. You want my jewelry? We're not getting any true answers just yet, but we're getting uh, we're getting messed with. That's a long EVP we got okay. on this guy. I got a review. Great, okay, guys. Let's break for lunch, guys. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, Sam. You're not going to believe this. Okay. What's Where? going on, Ben? I, I, want, I want the crew in here, too. Because I want you guys were all, we were all having lunch. I come back here to review this EVP tape. Okay. As I'm watching this on four squares, let me show you what we, Are you let okay? me show you what we freaking captured. Watch right here. Okay. Just watch. Oh, my I'm gosh. Watch, watch. Okay, okay. Right about here. And I was here watching it live. I know for a fact nobody came in or out of that house and I was watching it live oh as God. I were doing these EVPs. I have never, ever seen anything like this on TV, out of TV, anything I've ever done. So this is a full freaking body apparition. Jesus. All the way down with the dress down to the ground. You see through that thing. You can literally see through it, dude. You, you can, can see the see background as it walks through right you there on the bottom. It. But this time like we get the whole uniform. We captured the whole thing that I think is probably a nurse. Guess what? I'm sold. The rest of the cast and the entire crew were at a meal break, and I was sitting in the ghost coach, and there's definitely no one here wearing a long white dress. I know what I saw. I know it was captured. We have to do our due diligence. I need somebody to walk that path. Sarah, go. Kay. Go, go, Sarah. So much of the figure that we captured on an infrared camera is actually translucent. There's, there's also very little detail on the head. OK, I'm in. So we want to see what an actual person would look like retracing those same steps from the same camera angle, same camera, same lighting. OK, make sure Scott's floodlight um, is off for this. Uh, we can, OK, now it's off. If Sarah appears to be a solid form from head to toe and we hear her footsteps, 
then there's a chance we've actually captured a full body apparition of the nurse who's haunting this plantation. Okay, and uh, when you're ready, nice slow walk past that doorway. Oh, can you see in here? Just so we're clear, it's pitch black. Sarah, if you can't see there, someone who's an actual person would have had to know that route very well without tripping or falling. This thing, whatever it was, it wasn't stumbling, it was, it was floating. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, stop. Okay, you look like you. You can see Sarah's head and her entire body in solid form, but this other figure, it looks more translucent and there's not as much detail on the face or head. It, it almost looks like her hair might be pulled up in a bun. Plus, listen to this. You can clearly hear Sarah's footsteps on the floor, but the other figure isn't making any sound at all. Let's go back. I want to go into that room. I want to talk to her. OK. Let's do it. We didn't get any EVPs earlier, but the good news is Diane actually found the name of the nurse who's in the photograph on the wall here. So we want to verify if Mina Nordoff is the spirit who's haunting this home. All right, let's get everything set up. If you walk with me near this device, it lights up. I just need you to get as close as you can to me. If you were brought to the plantation to help with the yellow fever, if you were left here to work with those who are sick and dying. <laughs> See, it's getting me? really cold. It's it spiked. Do I have a nurse here that helped with yellow fever? Can you please just come into this room? Whoa. Whoa! It's going off here too. It just went all around the entire room. It like went off at the same time, it like the whole room like spiked. Went off in there. All devices just. Did you fired. have the millimeter there and the REM pods there? The REM pods in the other room, yes. Did you by chance take the jewelry? Please come into this room, come close to me. If you know where the jewelry went. Okay. It just happened here too. Are you angry about something? Are you frustrated that there's not enough supplies? Whoa, whoa. That just spiked off the charts. What did you just ask? If she was upset that they didn't have enough supplies, there wasn't enough to take care of everybody. Can I try something? I'd like to know who she is and maybe she might feel a connection to me. Ma'am? Can you let me know if I say your name, if this is you? Ma'am, are you Mina Nordoff? So right now it looks like Jack is situating the camera in the eighth floor hallway. There's been a lot of activity there, especially with a man roaming the halls. How's that camera looking? It looks perfect. Groovy. We have an angle on Jack's room. Last night, he was hearing noises. That's a good camera angle. We have the basement where there's been a man that's been seen. We have the roof in case we see any activity up there. We have the second floor staircase where there's been a male apparition seen. And we have my bedroom, because in this room, there's been a ton of reports of a male apparition standing at the foot of the bed. All right, we begin. So tonight, we're going to bring in our psychic, Sarah Lemos, and she's going to do a complete walkthrough. We're going to take her to all the hot spots. And I'm really hoping that she can uncover some of the undocumented deaths that have occurred here, especially on the upper floors. This one makes me super nervous. Really? Yeah. Why? Let's just put it this way. I don't want to be jumped or bumped off the top of this thing. OK. Ooh. All right. Well, should we head on in? Wow. All right. I'm going to lock the door. I'm very excited to work with Sarah. She doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know what she's investigating. What are you vibing? So there's a masculine energy that keeps telling me to come on up. I don't trust the masculine energy. 
Then additional to that, um, something is calling me down. All right, let's go to the basement then. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, where are you drawn to? We need to go back here. Okay. Something is running around here. It's moving quickly. It doesn't want to be seen. It gets seen, but it doesn't want to be seen. Is this a human energy or? Yeah. And it feels very stuck. Well, I guess this would be definitely also somewhere I would check. Now, the energy I get is a masculine energy that likes to control everything. Picking up on anything intelligent? The man? Yeah. Intelligent? Yeah, like this is something that would communicate. Oh, yeah. OK. Sarah Lemos, um, she came in and right off the bat was picking up on stuff. She made it seem like a lot of these spirits are, are willing to get a little more physical, as we've been kind of told, so. It's kind of interesting. The female that's here that feels stuck, that one I'm not sure yet, because mm. she's so spastic. She's the energy that's been around really, really fast. Are you picking up on an age? I'm going to say 18 to 23. She's a younger person, yeah. somebody that would have worked here, somebody that would have stayed here. People who have seen the woman have informed me. They're like, I just get the most evil feeling. People have described her as like wearing like Victorian style like clothing. Since you are feeling like this thing is calling you up, should we go check out the roof? Please. I heard jump or bump. So you think that someone jumped? Yes. Bump would be me tossing you, and a jump would be I chose to go. Right. Hmm. Interesting. It seems that there are all sorts of really fast-moving entities at this location. I mean, it's really making me eager to want to investigate more. May I? Yeah. Did you experience anything back here? Have you heard anything back no, here? No, I haven't. So tonight should be fun. OK. Um, I would watch for um, fog on the glass on okay. here. And do we know if somebody died here in this room? I don't know. We don't okay. know specifics on what happened in what room. OK. I was really curious to see what Sarah picked up in my room. And she kept looking towards the bathtub. And from Katrina's research, we have a confirmed death of a man that shot himself in the bathtub. So all right, this hotel is called the Padre. OK. And it has been here since 1928. As far as deaths go, we know of two confirmed suicides from jumping off the roof. We know uh, of allegedly someone um, shooting themselves in a bathtub. That's why I was so drawn to the damn bathtub. I should have so said that something. That was in my room. Absolutely. Hmm. So uh, yeah, thank you. Good luck, guys. Thanks. Will do. Thank you. All right. So we are going to start in the basement. We will work our way up. Yes. Contact the male presence. Gonna to the basement, and we're gonna get possessed by a demon. Um, I might as well set up the room pod, okay. too. My name's Jack. I'm Heather. We don't mean to harm. We just want to document. We just want to prove to everyone else that you're real. We believe you're here. Can you come and touch this green light? OK. Is something in the basement with us right now? Can you make that device? Light up again, you just did it. A lot of the people that work here say they see you running up and down this hallway in white. Can you show yourself to us? 
You like to mess with them, so mess with us. What? Whoa. What's going on with those curtains? That has to be the win. That's aggressive, though. Is there a door open? There's no, like, air source right here that would... That was weird. Are you watching us? They're not moving so at all weird. now. so weird. Is there someone or something in the kitchen with us? Make those curtains flap again. When I walked through there, I didn't feel any kind of, like, air source hitting me. I think, here's an idea. I think we should go back to HQ. Mm -hmm. One of us sit at the monitor, and each of us take a turn going up now by ourselves. OK. Yeah, let's try it. Is my REM pod going off? Whoa, why did that oh, just... Oh, it's, it's really going off. Look, it's going... Holy What? <gasps> what the? Tell me if you heard this story before. A young woman from a European village, right, decides to go somewhere, like maybe grandma's house, right? Mm -hmm. What does she want to do? She wants to cut through the most scariest part of the forest. Projects? Could be, could be, definitely could be. <laughs> she goes that way, yeah. and this is what we call in this clip. Let's check it out. What, are they, what is she saying, Marcus? She's saying, I'm up in these streets right now. Watch me. Like, subscribe, share. Watch right behind the tree. You see that? Oh, oh. did you see that? What the fuck? I'm gonna try it again. Let me see what I. Look, 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 look. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, you can see. see like a peekaboo. I see what you're talking about now. But I also saw it at the bottom, too. The eyes at the bottom. Oh! And you saw yeah. how you did that, too? Yeah. She said, my fault. It's, in any in language. Any language. <laughs> it's, it's what it is. It's what it is in any language. So what y'all think now that you get a good sight? It didn't look like it wanted to get caught. Right? That like was, was like a, a straight up werewolf. This was straight wait, up. We're saying this was werewolf. You know that was a werewolf. You're going all the way there. You take Man, it to We're going to a lichen this, tooth. This is a lichen, bro. This is. <laughs> <laughs> That's what that thing was. <laughs> so let's go ahead and bring Eileen on. She was the one who was going to Grandma's house. Oh, I want to know what she said. Eileen, what's up? What's up? I saw that you was lost in the woods. Was that what's going on over there? Exactly. My my friends pointed it out in my direct messages on Instagram, and they were like, what the F is behind the tree and under the tree? You did say <laughs> at one point. What were you <laughs> about? Well, <laughs> well, I was uh, stepping in mud. Uh, oh, uh, that'd do it that do it every <laughs> time. Every time. So are those woods known for any strange activity? Like, have other people seen things in that area, too? One minute away from where I was filming, that's ca there's a castle there. People have seen a woman in black. What do you think it is that you saw? I don't know. What do you think it is? You know what it was? It was the big bad wolf. I mean, I'm just impressed with how uh, cool, calm, and collected you are. I'm just like, yeah, whatever. Whoever it was, he didn't do anything, or she didn't do anything. So, so what is it to fear? It's the difference between the Swedish mentality and the American mentality. Oh, right, yeah. American mentality would be like, oh, so I went back and burnt the forest down. <laughs> yeah, right. I did it. I did it. I had to. 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 Hey, guys, good to be back. Hey, did you see that werewolf? Werewolf? <laughs> Man. I, I feel wow. like that's a werewolf. I feel like that's a werewolf. I, Tell I, me if I'm uh, wrong. You know, that's not where my mind went at all. Okay. But uh, this area, Gothenburg, there's a legend, and it goes back to the 1800s where there was a young woman, and she got pregnant, had a baby, illegitimate, mm. and after a couple of days, the baby is found dead. And some people speculate that she actually smothered the child. Uh, no proof either way. But eventually, this young woman commits suicide and becomes a ghost that they refer to as the Black Lady of Gothenburg. Wow. So do we think that she should maybe start taking the long way to Grandma's house now? Because yeah. cutting through the woods <laughs> ain't doing it that for her. That ain't doing now. it for her. She keeps finding things. Man, Sweden has got some really dark, witchy history. 
tied to the eastern coast, there's this small island uh, called Blokula. They say this is where the devil dwells and dances with his minions. Oh. And the witches, whether the devil's really there, would have to be a witch to find out. About the witches, like we dress up as witches every Easter and <laughs> pretend that we're riding to Blokula. That <laughs> <laughs> she said we dress up as witches on Easter. Wow. <laughs> on Easter, yeah. Thank you guys so very much. Have a wonderful day. If anyone's here in Unit 4 with us, now's your chance to make yourself known. Tell us your name. If you're here and you know about us, you have to acknowledge us. Give us a big, big oh. sound. <laughs> so, light in 49 just went on. If that's you, if this is not explainable, turn it off. Turn off that light. Our friend Chip says there's six of you here. You're telling me that all six of you are that weak, you can't turn a light off after you turn it on? You know, we can send in people to get rid of you, to make you go away. Is that us? Holy <laughs> that was loud. That was back there. That is definitely not us. All right, so whoever made that bang, will he make another noise for yes? You heard another noise? What? What? You did? Did it block out the entire door or just part of the door? All right, so you're getting our attention now. Uh, I just think it's odd that Chip says he felt like there was some kind of D-word entity down there. Yeah. And then the next day we come down there and it smells like death. Like yeah. it literally, that's what, that's the smell of a dead animal. Yeah. I just find that a little too, uh, that's too on point for me. Yeah, a little too close to home. All right, we're going downstairs. Oh. All right. Well, we're down here. What was that? That was a new entry? No. Yeah, I, yeah, it was back through there, right? Make that noise again. Yeah, it's behind the wall. Are you trapped in a cell? Are you just playing games at this point? Here, Jack, if you want to do the flashlight, I brought two. OK. Where should we set this up at? You just probably put it on the steps. Yeah. Facing us. So is anyone down here? And I've just placed two flashlights on the stairs. If you come over and touch one of those flashlights, it'll turn on. Or you can keep making noises. That seems to work for you. Give me one really good noise if you understand what I'm asking of you. Where'd that come from? It sounded like behind that wall. God, it stinks back here. Oh. Where, where were you guys when it happened? Um, I'm at this top of the stairs. All right, so I guess which flash? Oh, what? 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 Holy All right, so 
this next clip is the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. The uh, Waverly Hills Sanatorium is kind of considered one of the most haunted locations in America. It has had thousands of investigations and it's one of those places that just keeps getting crazier and crazier the more people that go. Um, it's seen its fair share of death, so much so that uh, there was tunnels that were underneath the facility uh, to move corpses out of the facility. Um, because- Were they killing them? No, I think it was one of those things that like tuberculosis and you know, a lot of these sanatoriums were mm -hmm. rejigged to become uh, tuberculosis facilities back in- But it's kind of like, well, we have quarantine now. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, if you go, if you, you suspect of getting TB, you'd go to the sanatorium. Exactly, yeah. So I have friends who have investigated this place. Uh, one of our producers here has. Um, and yeah, this place has no shortage of experiences. But you've never I've been. I've never been, no, because it's it's actually kind of hard to get into now because it's so popular. It's a long round the block. Pay attention to the spot right here. Yeah. Elvis, stop it. How weird is that? You can like, see. Yeah, it looks like someone walking. You can like see the gate and everything. Yeah. Why is the film quality so bad? Because they're filming with a night vision camera. Night vision camera. That's <laughs> just creepy there. Can we watch it again? Because yeah. Elvis was scratching and I couldn't. Oh, look that Elvis. way. Elvis. Elvis, stop it. Look that way, boo. You'll see right here. You just can you clearly see something go. That's weird, that is. Isn't it? If I saw that, you'd, you'd, there'd be a bad smell in the air and I'd be out. <laughs> Some dust. <laughs> like the old cartoons. <laughs> on the grainy film that he was on, it does look pretty authentic, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um... I'll give that nine out of ten. Nine out of ten on the woogie boogie. Yeah. Mum, I'm sticking with my eight. An eight on the woogie boogie. Nice. The clip reminds me of a theory in the paranormal world, and they call it residual hauntings. And residual hauntings are like an energy echo, where it's not like an intelligent spirit, but it's like that person's energy it's yeah. trapped, is trapped. Yeah. And That's still what that looks like. Yeah, very. It definitely felt like a residual kind of energy there. Do you think that could be the ghost of like a nurse or a doctor because it's all in white? No, I think it's a uh, patient. Do you think that paranormal events in locations can cause hauntings? Like Give if, me that again. Like if a traumatic event happens yeah. in a location like... I, I, I think that people who went before they went, they would just stay in have a peaceful way out. Yeah. You're going to get some spirits. Like between here and there, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. So, are you saying that you believe in residual hauntings? And I saw in that very moment my father's hard, skeptical gaze melt away. The countless hours I'd spent in that dark basement trying to convince my parents that all was not as it appeared in the world were paying off. I don't know. I pull out your next. All right. It's time that there's a paranormal investigator video game. You know, like the Ghost Brothers? Mm. And their dim-witted sidekick? Yay! What? I'd never take that dim-witted Jack character, though. No? I wouldn't pick him. I'm, I'm hurt and offended. Oh! I have feelings, too. <laughs> and when you encounter a Phantom Mist in the game, guess what? It would look something like this. Take a look, Jack, and I'm gonna see if you will be able to hang with us by watching this clip. Watch this. Okay, so it's a uh, first-person shooter style, yep, like see Call it. of Duty. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know what we're looking at. You didn't catch it? What, like the dust in front of the lens? That was more than dust. You see the mist going across the screen. Yeah, right there. Okay, so, Whoa, all right. You don't see that mist? <laughs> Let's call it a light anomaly. There's somebody letting that vape smoke up. That's vape that's smoke? What, that's no. Like... Wait, hold on a second. What's that say on the back wall? Zoe is a sex god. 
What? That's what you got up in this mug, bro? This is, this is, this is. That's what it says in the back. <laughs> yeah, it does. Is that how you found this clip? <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. All right, now for level two in the game. Look what else he found while laying on this slab in the morgue. Oh, that's oh, great. Oh, that. Yep. So he's laying that shooting up. Correct. You gotta watch it. He moves his feet. What the f was that? Ooh, what his soul little... got up out of him. Let me rewind. He moves his feet. Oh! Some get on up out of him. It was a soul. Or somebody else's. That's really interesting. Where is this? I actually have a witness. Let's get Bradford in here. What's going on, Bradford? How we doing, guys? You hi, yeah. baby. Welcome. Explain to these guys why you were laying in the morgue. What were you doing there? I do a paranormal investigation myself. That's why I was in this abandoned hospital. There's a nurse that still lingers around here. I was seeing all kinds of shadow figures around me. That's why yeah, I ended up pulling out my phone. Now, does that morgue have any specific history? That hospital itself was a tuberculosis hospital, so it did have a lot of deaths in it. Oh, wow. Check this out. I would love to bring in a different perspective. So I'd like to bring in coroner Donna Frankart. How you doing? Great, thanks. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for joining us. So you've been a coroner for years. You've seen anything with like paranormal? Oh my God, yes. I've uh, been around paranormal activity for about 12 years. Wow. I've had spirits showing up. They've knocked pictures over, scratching high on my back. Wow. Oh. Even though I'm no longer a, a deputy coroner, it's still happening. I had an old lady at the side of my bed the other night. I almost had a coronary. Wow. Has this happened your whole life, or did this only start happening once you became a coroner? I never really noticed anything happening before I was a coroner. I was told, because I was so compassionate on the scene, that a lot of these decedents they were confused, so they followed me home. And things started happening, and that's when I became aware of things uh, aren't normal. Do you think it's a good idea to lock yourself inside of a morgue locker? <laughs> oh, she laughing. And she already said, nah, you know that ain't good. I'd rather poke myself in the eye repeatedly than uh, go into a morgue locker. <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, I would never do that. They're not all good entities. Mm. You know, you've got evil entities, and they can follow you home and wreak havoc on your life. So personally, no, I would not. So while he's in that, he sees like a shadow figure. Who or what do you think that could be? It could have been any of the spirits that were lurking around in the morgue. So you're thinking it could be one of the souls of, of the dead bodies that, that were in the morgue? Well, it makes sense because there's energy and, and there are spirits, our souls continue on. I can't deny that. I've seen too much. I'm still witnessing. Donna, thank you so much. Bradford, thank you for showing those clips. Have a great evening. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Have a good one, guys. I think my eyes are playing tricks on me. Oh my holy God. I have full body chills. What? Because under the red sign, right where that bar is, yeah. it looked like a shadow went right to left, but arch, as if something went over. Like jumped over. That was probably one of the clearest shadow figures I have ever seen. Wait. Did you see that door yeah. slam? Yeah. Or like a door creaked open? went out the door. It went out the door. There's doors slamming. Like opening, like creaking. There's nobody else here. I think we need to go look for that place. This is why, right? Here. This is where the shadow figure that I saw, right here. Mm -hmm. Could it be any of these doors? That kind of sounds like it. And you know what? If somebody were to like get it to come open. That. 
Honestly, that sounds like it more than anything. Huh. So weird. Oh, it's so freaky to me right now, because I feel like at any moment I'm going to see somebody just, like, sitting. <sighs> OK, let's do an EVP session. Hello, who's up here with us? We thought we saw someone running through here. Can you tell us what your name is? Can you tell us what you're doing here? Did you come here on that ship? How long have you been here? Let's listen to this and maybe this picks it up. Hello? Who's up here with us? Like down there. We thought we saw someone running through here. Can you tell us what your name is? Can you tell us what you're doing here? Did you come here on that ship? How long have you been here? I have to send him a high pitch. It's quiet up here right now. I mean, clearly whatever's here is not responding to anything. I so wanted something massive to happen. Just nothing. I think we should regroup and figure out where to go next. We each saw a shadow figure of some sort up on the balcony, and then suddenly we were hearing doors slam and gates rattle. Then we heard a male voice. All of that happened together. But other than that, we didn't get a lot of interaction. But this place, I don't know that it's been investigated a whole lot. So next stop is research, and we focus on the shipwreck. Kathy Kelly is a local historian. She has been studying up on the Paramount Theater and the Morrow Castle disaster for a number of years. That's a, a big historical moment in Asbury Park. We need to make sure we do our due diligence here and work as hard as we can to get a firm answer for Jason and everyone in this town. So I brought you um, a newspaper from the day after the Morrow Castle actually beached here. And what's interesting about this is not only the list of the victims, um, and there were a lot still missing, but it, it was still burning. Yeah. Mm. It took five days for the Asbury Park Fire Department to put the fire out enough for people to go on there. At this point, they already knew it was 182 lives. That's a lot of dead people. This was massive news. Of worldwide course. news. Mm -hmm. In addition to being this huge news thing, it was a huge financial boon. Wow. So wow. that's a pressed penny. Oh my gosh, of the actual ship. ship. Of no the actual way. ship. Yeah. I also brought you some postcards. You know, this was produced within a week. Mm -hmm. It actually became the biggest tourist attraction that Asbury Park ever had. You have 20,000 people every day yeah. watching what's going on. This was such a huge deal that it was the beginning of the Garden State Parkway. I mean, it changed our road systems. Wow. And uh, these are actually family photos, though. Someone oh. came in and gave those to me. Off in the distance coming in. <gasps> They're waiting for yeah, it. Yeah, because the radio broadcast told them to. The DJ, he was in the convention hall. There's a lot of people saying to us that bodies from this were brought into the theater and the convention hall. Right. Is that true? When they came in to salvage the ship, mm -hmm. they took skeletal remains out, mm -hmm. they took ashes out, and those things got brought into both convention hall and the Paramount. When it actually, like, stopped, was there anyone alive on that boat still? No when they were finally able to go in and photograph it. I mean, there were no 
intact bodies there, and there were people literally sleeping, like literally in their bed. Mm -hmm. It's so sad reading through all those names where there were so many kids and stuff, and like, I just can't even imagine. Well, thank you. You, you definitely welcome. enlightened yeah, thank us you, quite a bit on this tragedy. What's really great is this is tangible information. So this is something that we know that happened right outside the Paramount. We're at the anniversary of the disaster 85 years later, and we can use all of this information, and, and maybe they will uh, reach out and talk to us and know what we're talking about. So I reviewed the DVR from last night, mm -hmm. and I know that you and I both had that crazy experience seeing the shadow up in the mezzanine. Yeah. And then we tried to chase it down and couldn't find it. So last night, we caught something on the DVR in that same area, and it looks really interesting, and it only happened once. And it's very quick. In the seat, third row up. <gasps> oh, ooh. Isn't that weird? Interesting about it is it's behind mm -hmm. these seats. Yeah. And then right here, there's like two eyes almost looking toward. That's wild. OK. If it were like a bug or something, it would be in front of the seat. This is behind the actual seats. Like, there's no way that's a reflection of something that's small from that far away. Basically, we caught what we were experiencing last night. Yeah, and what they've been area. experiencing, they all say they see shadows move around up there. There'll be definitely some shadows generally coming from left to right. Okay. Like, we can experience what they experience all day long, but until we get some sort of identifiable evidence right. from whoever is here, I'm pretty sure the place is haunted, but it's a matter of figuring out who is haunting it. Yeah. Okay. This is Steve and Steve entering the Coliseum. The claims of activity are disembodied voices. Dave, Sherry, and I heard a sound. We'll check it back at the, on the DVR just to whoa, make sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, I heard that. What the hell was that? Is anybody here with us? We know that there have been people found buried here. Margarita, are you here? What happened to you? Look, look. What is moving up there, man? Look at it. It's pulsating. Yeah. What's going on in there? Wow. Steve to Tango. Tango for Steve. Can you check on the monitors to confirm an anomalous light we're seeing in the arena? On my way. You have to check it out, right. you know. We can't stay down there and just assume it's something paranormal. Absolutely. Can I go for Steve? Go for Steve. OK, I see you guys walking up the stairs there. Thanks, man. There are some windows up there. I, I see the windows on the top. I'm seeing some light in that room. Can you tell if it's coming from a source or if it's just an illumination of some sort? I can't tell. It is pretty distant. The camera, it's more of a glow. I'm going to go check it out now. Copy that. Yeah, I mean, that's a claim. There, too. They say that they see lights. If it's something paranormal, it would have to be energy, so a glowing ball of light, or an actual ethereal apparition. I don't know. OK. The control room. I really don't see anything in here that's going to explain that illumination. There's no outside windows. I don't see any fluctuation. Hmm. If this was in a room full of electronics, we could try to get some sensory equipment going, but... Yeah, crazy readings. Right. Is there anyone here with us? This is wild, man. I really don't know how to explain what we saw with the light. I think neither. 